So this morning I'm going to talk to you today about how Yehoshua, the real Messiah, Israel's Moshiach, will come and fight against the church. Yeah, I said it right. Will fight against the church. I have word for word proof of it. Are you ready? And oh, and why is he going to do this? I will show you proof of that, of why he's going to do it as well. We go to Revelation 2. Message to the church in Pergamon. But that's only one church, Henry, you might say. Oh, but listen carefully. You will find out that it's all of them. And to the messenger of the church Ecclesia in Pergamos. This is what he which has the sharp sword with two edges says. Now many of you people in the churches so to speak will just gloss right over that but this is extremely important. He is the one who has the two edges edged sword. We're going to get into that a little deeper in just a few minutes. I know your name and where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. That would be the Temple of Zeus. Incidentally, the Temple of Zeus is what most of the institutions, the government institutions, the buildings are patterned after. If you'd bother to check. And you hold fast to my name, those people who live in the Satan's, where Satan dwells. They hold fast to my name. Well, not even modern day Christians do that. Modern day Christians hold fast unto a different name. Jesus. King James Version is proof of that. That was ne Jesus was never his name. Jesus was never his name. Jesus is the English, Latin, and Norseman name for the sun idol, Baal, Baal. Let's continue. You have not denied my faith either. Even in those days when Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. Where was Antipas slain? He was slain at the altar of Zeus, who the Gentiles today, today name their Messiah after Zeus. Hey, Zeus. But I have a few things against you because you have, or you hold, there to be strong. You have them, you, you hold on to what? Strongly the doctrine of Balaam. What is the doctrine of Balaam? teaching to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. This is Yehoshua saying this, folks. And yet you, the church, you claim that he hates the people of Israel now. Your animosity towards Israel proves where your, your allegiance is, where you stand with Yehoshua, if you are on the wrong side of Israel, then you are on the wrong side of Yehoshua. Because he is saying, Yehoshua is saying, you have them there that hold strongly the doctrine of Balaam. And it, it, it does, when you read this carefully, it says, because you have, you hold there, in that location, 
strongly the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast stumbling block before the children of Israel. There is no figurative speaking here. This was plots to destroy Israel, to destroy the Jews among them, and to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. You also have them there that hold the doctrine of Nicholas, which thing I hate. Repent or else. They didn't repent. So the or else came to Pergamos. But this doesn't apply to the church today, no. Right? Wrong! Or else I will come unto you quickly and will fight. Make war. It says, will make war with them with the sword of my mouth. What sword is that? The sharp sword with the two edges. The sword out of his mouth. Why? Because they hold the doctrine of Balaam, which means they believe in casting stumbling blocks before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And the doctrine of Nicholas. Well, the Christians today embrace all of that. Are they exempt from this war that he's going to bring toward Pergamos, the church in Pergamos, if they don't repent? No, they are not exempt, and I'll show you why. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you have an ear? O church in Rome, or a church in Timbuktu, or a church in England, Russia, do you have an ear? Yes, you do then you'd better pay attention to what the Spirit says to the churches. Why? Because it applies to you. Now, I've gone over the message to the, to the messenger of the church in Thyatira. These things says, the son of not God, but of Elohim. If you go look it up in the Hebrew, it's Elohim. And Elohim is the one whose eyes are like the flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass. I know your works, charity and service and faith and your patience and your works, and the last be more than the first, notwithstanding I have a, let's see, a few th little things against you because you have allowed that woman. You tolerated, you left her be. You didn't deal with that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. And what? did she do to teach and to not seduce but to cause to wander my servants to commit fornication that's a whole lot like this Balaam deal so we're getting into more um, nitty-gritty about how he's going to make war with these people who practice the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of, of the Nicol Nicolaitans or Nicolaitans and to eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. She refused. I will cast her into a bed, and we all know that uh, that is a reference to a sick bed. And all those who committed for, uh, adultery with her will be cast into the great tribulation.
except they repent of their deeds. Look, he puts an exception here. If you just stop it, if you just stop doing these things, throwing stumbling blocks before the people of Israel, and one of the stumbling blocks that is thrown in front of the people of Israel right now is the unwillingness to abide by the Balfour Declaration Agreement. You see, the land that they have right now is not big enough for the, the Jews, for all the Jews to come back home. And so what happens is, all the nations, including the United States, including, put stumbling blocks in the way to keep the, all the Jews from going back home. They want to keep Israel small. And in doing so, these nations are marking themselves for death in the great tribulation that is coming. Death, yes. I will kill, kill her children with Pestilence, a fatal pestilence. You think that COVID is something? COVID is nothing compared to what's coming. And all, all the churches shall know that I Search the reins and the hearts, and I will give every one of you according to his works. All right? Now. Two-edged sword. Remember that one? He's going to kill them. So he's going to kill these people in Thyatira who follow after that Jezebel. And he is going to fight against all the churches it says, all the churches shall know. Now, look right here. But I say unto you and the rest in Thyatira that have not had this doctrine and which has not known the depths of Satan like Christianity from uh, almost 2000, very shortly after he spoke of this, uh, the, the churches became corrupt. I will put on you no other burden, but that you should already have hold fast until I come. Now, he that overcomes, you're not already saved. You, you Christians, you're fools when you say, I got saved. And so, no, you did not. That's not true. He that... Um, Endures unto the end shall be saved. I'll show it to you. See that? Matthew 10, verse 22. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. He that endures to the last trumpet shall be saved. That's future tense. You're not saved now. Those of you who are saved now, you are not saved. Those who say you are saved now, you are not saved. You are lying. You are lying to those who you speak to about it, and you are lying to yourself. Now, let me show you this. Oh, I want to look at this one more time now. Keep my works unto the end. Him will I give power over the Gentiles. You say it's not the Gentiles? Gentiles! Him will I give power over the Gentiles. He's going to join Israel in their fight against the Gentiles. And he will rule them. Yehoshua is going to rule them with a rod of iron. 
as the vessels of a potter, they shall all be broken to pieces. Because I have received the word to do so from my father. And I will give him a morning star. You'll find out what that means in a while. And he that has the ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, let's go to Revelation 19. When is he going to come and fight against these churches with his double-edged sword? Let's go look in Strong's Concordance. Verse 15. Well, first of all, it says, I saw the sky open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteous, righteousness does he judge and make war. He said he's going to go to war against the churches. I told you. I showed you. His eyes as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that none considered or perceived, but he himself. Very few even know his real name to begin with. Now think about that. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name or his title, his authority, is called the statement, the speech, not the word, the speech. Word is one singular word. No, he is now called the speech of Elohim. Why? Because Jehovah spoke of him. In the beginning, he spoke of him, said to Eve, that Satan's seed is going to uh, bruise his heel, but he will smash the head of Satan, of the serpent. It's also written in the book of Isaiah. He was written about. This is, hold on, me, hold on. In the he hidden what happened? In the shadow of his hand has he hidden me. It is right here. Isaiah 49 verse 2. This is Jehovah speaking to Isaiah. Listen, O coastlands, unto me, unto me, and listen, you people, far away. Jehovah, this is future tense. You see, Isaiah was a prophet. Jehovah called me from the womb. Miriam's womb. From the bowels of my mother, he made mention of of my name not Jesus but Yehoshua that was when his name was first mentioned it was never mentioned before he was hidden and he made my mouth like a sharp sword here we go with that sharp double-edged sword again in the shadow of his hand has he hidden me hid Hide. 
and made me a polished shaft in his quiver he has hid me. So he has been hidden until he was born. I know you Christians don't believe that. See, it's because you insist on having your paganism superseding the truth. And because you do that, because you have your paganism superseding the truth, you feel like you must throw stumbling blocks in front of Israel. Do everything you possibly can to keep them from entering into the kingdom. And you will, when Yehoshua, the real Moshiach, comes, the one you call the Antichrist, you will come and fight against him. And he will take a rod of iron and shatter all of you like pottery. On his head were many crowns and an okay. So his name was the speech. Let's make sure. The statement, the speech, that speech in Isaiah 49 that Jehovah spoke to Isaiah and told him to write it down. And the armies which were in the sky followed him upon white horses and clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth came a sharp sword with which he was to smite the Gentiles. Let's look at it again. The Gentiles! And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Yes. And smash the Gentiles to bits like a potter does with his pottery. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Jehovah Elohim. And on his vesture and on his thigh name written Melech of Let's, uh, let's make sure we get it right. Let's look at it in um, Hebrew, shall we? Wow, what happened here? I'm going back and forth. All right, let's do this then. Just click one and click. I don't know why this is happening. It makes no sense because I hit strong concordance and then it went backwards. Okay, here we go. King. Melech. Melech of Melech. And master of masters. Now, so you, the Ecclesia, you're going to send your men to fight against him, and you're going to lose, and you're going to lose big, and you're going to lose at the Gog and Magog War. This is where it's going to take place. How do I know this? And I saw the messenger standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Elohim, that you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and all that sit on them, and all the flesh of them, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth, 
and their army is gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and his great army. Now, let us go to Ezekiel 38. Nine, and this will explain to all of you exactly who you think is just Gog and Magog. Well, you're in for a rude awakening. <clears throat> we'll go to 39. Actually, we'll go to 38 first. And it says, Gog. Rosh, that implicates Russia, captain of Meshach and Tubal. Well, essentially, uh, Russia is essentially the captain of uh, Meshach and Tubal today, because Tubal is Tbilisi in Georgia, and incidentally, that's, where, that's another name of Gog, but there's several names of Gog, and God is the name of the idol of the Gogites. By the way, as I've showed you in other videos, Meshach is obviously Moscow. You will return, and I will put hooks in your jaws and bring you forth all of your sus, which means both horses and flying birds. Okay. With them will be Persia, Iran, Kush, that can be anywhere from uh, Africa all the way to Af uh, to India. Libya. Gomer. That would be uh, much of Turkey to the... Uh, Gomer, no, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. This would be much of Turkey to the house of Togarma. Gomer is Europe. And Rifith... Rifith would be the uh, one of the sons of Gomer, which are the Celts. The Celts are the French, the, the Gauls, and much of the English. There are some English that are Germanic tribes, but they're all Gomer. They're Germanic tribes. Europe is Gomer! I'll give you more proof. All his bands and the house of Tukarma of the north. Now, now we go to 39. Where does Gomer live? So, well, we, all, we already know. If you, all you got to do is look at the table of nations. Ashkenaz are the Germans, the son of Gomer. Rifith, the son of Gomer, are the Celts, that would be the French and the British, the um, the Germanic tribes are much of mainland Europe, okay? What about, what about the Italians? What about the Greeks? All right, let's find out. We got them right here. You will fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your bands, and the people that are with you. I will give unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. We just read that in the book of Revelation 19. You will fall in the open field, for I have spoken. It says, Adonai Yehovah. Not Lord God, but Adonai Adon would refer to the Messiah. Adonai, that is Jehovah exclusively. Okay? Adonai, Jehovah, or Jehovah, it says right here. You shall fall upon the open field, for I have spoken, it says, Adonai Yehovah, I will send a fire on Magog. Now, when we read Zechariah 14, we know what this fire is. He's going to cause these people to launch nuclear weapons, that is my opinion, 
against each other. It does appear that is the case when you read um, the sixth trumpet sound. And among them that dwell carelessly or without fear and security in the coastlands, that, my friends, would be the Greeks and the Italians. So it covers all Europe, all Europe, and Russia, and Turkey, and Persia, and Kush, which goes from Africa all the way to India, and any other foolish nation who wants to participate. It appears when we read in Ezekiel 38 that the young lions of Tarshish, that would be the far, far west, do not want to participate. Now, and this is how they will know Jehovah when he saves them. Then they will know Jehovah. And this is how he's going to make his holy name. You know the holy name that is hated by the Christians of every sort. Right here, the holy name, the Shem Hachmeforesh. Jehovah. That is the holy name. And you Christians, you have bastardized his name openly. And the city of Wittenberg contains a Judensau from 1305. That's a Catholic Judensau. On the facade of the uh, Stadtkirk, the, the church where Martin Luther preached. It portrays a rabbi who looks under the sow's tail and under other Jews drinking from its tits. An inscription reading, Rabbini Shem Hamaforesh. Gibberish, which presumably, not presumably, it openly bastardizes the holy name. The sculpture is one of the last remaining examples in Germany of medieval Jew baiting in 1988. On the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Kristallnacht, debate sprung up about the monument which resulted in an addition of a sculpture recognizing that during the Holocaust six million Jews were murdered under the sign of the cross. And those of you who carry that sign, you are by default murderers! In Luther's Von Shem Hamaforesh, a book written by Martin Luther, he writes an entire book. This man, the father of all Protestantism, writes an entire book bastardizing the name, the holy name. The Shem, Hachmaforesh. Luther's comments in the Judensau sculpture at Wittenberg, echoing, repeating, agreeing with the anti Semitism of the image and locating the Talmud in the Baal Sals. And here is what he writes in his book. And all of you Protestants, you may not realize it, but you better not call yourself a pro you better not call yourself a Christian. Here in our church in Wittenberg, a sow is sculpted in stone. Young pigs and Jews lie suckling under her. Behind the sow, a rabbi is bent over the sow, lifting up her right hand, holding her tail high, and looking intensely under her tail and into her Talmud, as though they, he was reading something acutely or extraordinary, which is certainly where they get their Shem Hachmaforesh. Damned are all the Protestant churches because... He is the father of Protestantism, he who bastardized the name, the holy name. But Jehovah is going to make his holy name known among the Gentiles in this great war. When he sends Yehoshua with a double-edged sword to kill these people. 
who bastardized his name generation after generation after generation. through stumbling blocks in front of the people of Israel, forced them to commit idolatry. Oh yes, all of these sins will be repaid in full on this great day. The day that the last trumpet begins to sound. And so, in this way, will I make my hach Meforesh. Let's see. The Shem Hach Meforesh, known in the midst of my people Israel. This is how they're going to know his name again. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore, and the Gentiles shall know Jehovah the Kadosh is in Israel. Behold, it is come and it is done. Ain't nothing. There is nothing that's going to stop him. Says Adonai Yehovah. This is the day whereof I have spoken. That's the day. This is how he's going to do it. And you guys, you Christians, you can sit there and bellyache, bitch and moan all you want to about Israel. But their sins are small compared to yours. And they did not get away with it. They were punished for their sins. Now it's your turn. The absolute debauchery and wealth that you wallow in today is going to come abruptly to an end. There will be no air conditioning. There will be no clean water. Your lands will dry up. There will be no food. You will starve to death and then you will come against the Messiah and try to stop him from instituting the new covenant for Israel. And he will kill you. He will make you dead with this two-edged sword. You can call him the Antichrist all you want to. It's not going to change anything. You will die. And you will lose out on salvation. If that's your choice. 